Most of us now know that digital cinema cameras output log images and that we need to correct them to look good on our monitors. But why do we shoot in log? Why does it look so flat? And is that how a camera really sees? In order to be recorded by a digital camera, light has to be converted from its natural analog state, waves of light moving through the air, into a digital state. For this to happen, light is converted into an electrical charge by the camera sensor. Via an analog to digital converter, this electrical charge is recorded as a measured sample and assigned a pixel value depending on its amplitude or intensity, thus becoming a digital representation of the luminance information within the original scene. Now all camera sensors, when recording light as an electrical charge, do so in a linear fashion, regardless of their output format. What this means is that the relative luminance of the original scene is equivalent to the luminance captured by the sensor. If you double the light in the scene, the sensor sees and captures it as double the pixel value, a one-to-one -one translation. This process of converting continuous analog values into digital values is known as quantization, and the greater the bit depth of the quantization, the greater the accuracy of this digital representation. And while it's common for cameras to capture linear images with a bit depth of 14 or even 16 bits, most professional file formats are only 10 bit. So we run into the issue of how to accurately represent these high bit depth code values within our lower bit depth formats. With a 10-bit image, we have 2 to the power of 10 or 1024 possible code values. With a 16-bit image, we have 2 to the power of 16 or 65,536 possible code values. And trying to fit these 65,536 equally or linearly into 1024 means really stretching the 1024 to contain the 65,536. Make sense? This is where log encoding makes an entrance. Fortunately, because we are dealing both with images and human vision, we don't have to try and fit these code values in a linear or equal way. This is because human vision naturally compresses luminance detail. We struggle to see detail in very bright areas and very dark areas. This compression is logarithmic in nature. Practically, it allows us to move from a dark environment to a bright environment without our eyeballs catching on fire. So. If instead of linear encoding an image, we assign more code values to the areas that we are more sensitive to and less to the areas such as bright highlights where we are less sensitive, we can create a representation of the image by distributing more code values where they are needed and less where they are not. This is log encoding in a nutshell. And it uses both the science of human vision and mathematics to allow a 16-bit image to be represented using 10 bits. If we were to graph a normal image where there is no manipulation of the values, the inputs and outputs would be the same and we would get a straight line. If we now graph a log image, in this case an 8-bit image where the x-axis represents the code values 0 to 255 and the y-axis represents the log, in this case 2 to the power of 8, then we would get a curve shaped like this. With the tonal remapping, the curve becomes steeper at the beginning flattens in the middle a little, and flattens considerably at the top. It produces an image where the lowest values have been raised and the highest values have been compressed. This results in an image that looks flat. Now it is important at this point to understand that because the log image is derived from maths and is not a true representation of the final look, we have to use maths again to undo the log and to recreate a picture with the fidelity of the original scene. We need to get the log graph back to the straight line graph. And the answer to this is the S-curve. It undoes the log encoding. It lowers the lifted shadow areas, keeps the middle of the curve linear, and expands the highlights again. You can use a LUT or create your own curve for delogging an image, and each has its pros and cons. But the more mathematically correct this delogging is, the better the fidelity of the original luminance values. So make sure your LUT is accurate. The creation of LUTs and S-curves is the topic for another time. But if you have any questions or thoughts regarding this video, please leave them in the comments below. I hope this helps.